We all know those people that can eat a bunch of sugar and are still really skinny. Like they don't really gain weight. They'll say, oh, it's just I've got a fast metabolism or it's just my genetics. And that very well could be the case. I mean, we barely scratch the surface when it comes down to understanding that whole world. And then after that, we started thinking, well, maybe it's more of just an insulin resistance thing or an insulin sensitivity thing. Like someone that has a good, decently healthy metabolism can consume sugar and their cells are gonna soak it up and they're gonna utilize it just fine and all is hunky-dory. But someone that is insulin resistant consumes that same sugar and it's problematic. It raises their blood sugar, it prevents lipolysis, prevents fat burning, all these kind of things that are catastrophic for the metabolism. But there's actually more to the equation. Now what's interesting is which came first, the chicken or the egg, when I talk about sort of this entire picture. Because there is some evidence that healthy people that are good healthy weight can consume sugar and it might actually help them get skinnier, it might help them lose weight. And it has to do with particular proteins that are created in the body or secreted in the body when this is consumed. It's called FGF21. Let's break it down. This is newer literature and it's really interesting. After today's video, I put a discount link down below for the collagen protein that I use. Now, if you know me, you know I'm, I'm pretty pure and simple with what I like to use. And the reason I like bubs is there's nothing weird in it. It's just straight collagen protein, just straight hydrolyzed collagen that absorbs even in cool water. So you can mix it in cold water and it dissolves right away. It's super awesome. And I also just really like what they stand for. Now, if you know me, you know that I do a lot of work with the Army, with Special Forces, and Special Operations is just very near and dear to me. And Sean, who started Bubs Naturals, he started this in honor of his good friend, Glenn Doherty, who was a SEAL who passed away in a very famous, uh, famous combat. If you know Glenn Doherty or you can Google the name, you'll know about it. So anyhow, Sean created this entire brand to help support and donate in his honor. So 10% of all the proceeds that come from any purchase of the collagen go to charity in the name of Glenn Doherty, which is just awesome. So if you're a military person and you support that, it's just a good brand to support. Not to mention, it's just about the highest quality collagen protein that I've found out there. So that link down below gets you a special discount and helps support a good cause and supports this channel. So there was a study published in the journal Obesity. And this was interesting because they gave humans sugar, like sucrose, and they measured what is called FGF21 at 15 minutes, 30 minutes, and 120 minutes. Just to give some background, FGF21 is a protein that is known as a metabolic regulator. So a lot of the research right now is trying to understand what exactly FGF21 does because it seems to increase metabolic rate. It seems to increase what is called brown fat, which is fat that dissipates calories as heat, makes you burn more heat, which is good for fat loss. It also seems to just increase energy expenditure. It also seems to improve insulin, it improves glucose. So we're trying to understand all of the things with this. And there's a couple things in the world that we can consume that increase FGF21, but sucrose, sugar, is one of them. What was interesting in this particular study, they found that after consuming sucrose, there was an acute spike in FGF21. It was pretty noticeable. And along with that came a decreased blood flow to the striatum, so a portion of the brain that would sort of regulate appetite. What was interesting is that this did not occur in people that were overweight. It only occurred in people that were normal, healthy weight with a normal functioning metabolism. Weight seemed to dictate what sugar did in the body. Now, why this is so interesting is because when we're looking at how this affects the brain, if a healthy person consumes sugar, it essentially decreases blood flow to a region of the brain that tells them to basically not want to eat as much sugar. They have a healthy negative feedback response where they get the sugar and their body tells them to stop. Overweight people did not have that. So they're not getting the metabolic benefit and they're not getting the portion that says stop. So what happens? Overweight people eat sugar and they just keep going. Skinny people can eat sugar and their body will sort of self-regulate, at least based on this FGF21 piece. It was also noted that in this study that FGF21 was associated with, positively associated with BMI. So 
basically the more acute response FGF21 and the bigger it would spike when someone would have it, they were generally also lower BMI people. The skinnier people also, when they would have sugar, they would have a more acute high spike of FGF21 and then it would come back down, which tells us that their body is sensitive to it and it's initiating this response. If we look at a study published in Diabetologia, this had people consume a high fat diet or a high carb diet or a high protein diet. This particular study was looking at insulin resistant people. In this case, the high carb diet actually did not lose the weight. The high protein and the high fat diet lost 2.7 and 2.8 kilograms more than the group that had the high carbs. What is this telling us? I'm putting all these pieces together. Well, in this Diabetologia study, the metabolic state makes the poison. If someone is insulin resistant and they were to say, I'm gonna go on a very high sucrose diet to try to stimulate FGF21 and lose weight because it's gonna increase my resting metabolic rate, it's gonna potentially backfire and have all these contraindications and issues that occur later on. Whereas someone that is metabolically healthy and somewhat normal weight, if they just say, I wanna get shredded, but I'm already normal healthy weight, there's a chance they literally could have sugar and lose the weight because they're already normal weight and they're not insulin resistant. But you take someone that is insulin resistant, the sugar could absolutely backfire. What this does is it teaches us why there's those people out there that are already skinny and maybe already have a normal functioning metabolism because we can certainly have this start at a young age where we're dysfunctional metabolism. We know the rates of childhood obesity are astronomically high. So we already are starting people out when they're having issues metabolically. And then you feed sugar foods and all this, it just creates a recipe for disaster. But then you've got these other people that whether it's genetic or epigenetic or lifestyle or whatever, that are skinny and they can just consume sugar. My point in saying all of this is that if you are a healthy person and you are someone that is active and you are someone that is normal weight, normal BMI, you probably can occasionally have a bolus of sugar and it could help you lose weight. It sounds so mind boggling and it sounds completely, completely just backwards from what I would talk about for the last like seven, eight years. And I'm not changing my mind on anything here. I'm just thinking this is interesting. It explains why you see bodybuilders that will literally eat sugar, but as long as their protein needs are met and as long as their calories are where they want them to be, they still get shredded eating that stuff but it doesn't mean that everybody can do it. What I would suggest that you do as a practical takeaway is go and get a fasting insulin test. Also check your HbA1c. I wanna see where your glucose levels are at over the last couple of months, but also wanna see where your fasting insulin is. Because if you're insulin resistant, your fasting insulin is probably gonna be pretty high and you might not be someone that can tolerate sugar. Whereas someone that has a low insulin in the twos or something like that in that fasting insulin level, you could probably be someone that occasionally could have 50, 60 grams of sugar and actually get a benefit from it, as crazy and unbelievable as this sounds. But at the end of the day, hopefully it just helps explain why those horrible, wretched people that can just consume pixie sticks all day still lose weight. Why I look at something that tastes good and I gain weight. Anyhow, I'll see you tomorrow.